image itself and I just create a blank white layer you can see that this is the perspective grid of the photograph which can be really useful if I want to do something with this image maybe use it for a matte painting or something like that but mainly this is just an example to show how perspective works in real life so now we know how to use a custom shape to set up a perspective 1 point, 2 point or 3 point perspective but i show you another way uh, using the vanishing point filter in Photoshop to create a grid so let me just close these images and then I also create a new layer in this document and I go to filter vanishing point here in this filter you can define a plane with this tool the plane tool you just need to define four points of the plane so for example if I click here there there and there that is already a plane and if I want to use vertical lines as well I can click on these points here in the middle and holding down command or control on the PC and drag another plane and also I can do the same here so it creates something like a room which can help you to uh, create your drawing but if you click on OK nothing will change in your Photoshop document what you need to do if you want to use this grid as construction lines in uh, for your drawing you need to click on these additional options here in the filter and choose render grids to Photoshop so if you click on that and then if you click on OK Photoshop will render this grid onto that new layer that we just created and because it's not my background layer I can use the move tool and I can move it easily around and if I zoom a little bit closer you can see the details on this grid so once again this is a great way to start working in perspective and you, there's another way to use this filter for example if you have a complicated shape that you want to see in perspective you can create a drawing so in this case I'm going to use uh, just simply shapes and I select this third option the fill pixels option with the vector tools and I just quickly create something that I would like to then use in, uh, my, in the vanishing point with the vanishing point and just to make it more interesting I'm going to draw ellipses as well okay so let's say this is the profile that I would like to see in perspective all I need to do is to select everything so I go to select all and then edit copy deselect it I turn this layer off and I select my background layer or I can create another new layer and then I go back to filter choose vanishing point and you will see that we still have this uh, perspective grid and I just need to use command V or control V on PC to paste in uh, the drawing and then I just simply need to drag and drop it onto the perspective and you can see I can move it on the bottom on the left or on the right plane and I even have a free transform tool here to make it smaller so I hold down shift while I'm uh, making uh, the change on the size okay and I can easily place here on this plane so now I can see it in perspective and the great thing in the vanishing point filter is that I can select this part of the plane and hold down command and drag out another guide here on the left and place in the image again and then move it here on the left side so I can have one on the left and one on the right and I just then if I click on OK I just need to connect these lines so I select the line tool and then I connect these lines and I have an interesting perspective already on this uh, building okay so for example for a 
cathedral or something like that we can already create a 3D shape using the vanishing point for that so we could define two sides and then just simply connecting uh, the edges with these uh, lines again this is just good to create a foundation but saves a lot of time and effort if you start uh, drawing with this vanishing point filter and last but not least I would like to show you another way to set up your perspective and that's the 3D option in Photoshop if you have a simple background layer you can go to 3D and you can create shapes if you have the extended version of Photoshop CS4 or 5 so you can go to new shape from layer and you can choose for example cube so let me select cube and it will create a cube and uh, we can use these tools to make it smaller or bigger this is the 3D object rotate tool so with this I can click on the object and move it around and I see this little guide here on the left which I can use to make it smaller or bigger but I can also use these tools on the top and I select that one for which one is for scaling so I make it smaller okay like that and while I have the scale option selected I can also change the size like make make it higher and uh, create something like a skyscraper that's what I'm planning to do okay and let me change the scale once again make it a bit smaller okay now I would like to have another object another skyscraper so I'm going to right click on the layer and I choose duplicate layer and then instead of using the move tool I'm going to use the 3d move tool so the object move tool here on the top that's the object move tool which keeps it in perspective okay so I can move it in perspective and I just change the layer order as well I put this in the background so now if I move it around you can see it's behind the other object I just need to make it smaller as well okay so that's now in uh, perspective and I can continue doing this and creating lots of different objects but it's good to know that you can select the layers and then from the 3D panel you can merge them together so you can choose merge 3D layers it will st still keep it in 3D uh, objects but now they are going to be on one layer so I can rotate them together okay so that is a really useful option as well to set up uh, a 3D scene and to have an interesting perspective. As you can see there are so many different ways to set up your perspective or to help you start drawing perspective in Photoshop. We will put these all into practice once we are starting to use all the techniques that we have learned in this series. But once again remember you can just simply use lines to draw quickly a vanishing point a horizon and then start drawing in perspective or you can create a custom shape that we created together and use that as a vanishing point or you can use the vanishing point filter or 3d shape options and remember the different perspectives 1.2.3 point perspectives or the even more complicated like four or five point perspectives okay so I hope you found this tutorial useful next time I'm going to talk about how to use light and shadows in your composition which is again a very important lesson because without light you can't really describe 3d objects it is probably even more important than perspective to define 3D objects. So make sure you come back next time and learn about lighting and using lights and shadows for your compositions, for your very own digital art. Thanks a lot for your attention and I 